Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of Tiny Squares. And this right here is Robot Reaper. He's an original character by Super 7 from their line of villains called The Worst. I picked this figure up recently, didn't really know anything about the character, but as soon as you put a cool robot design in a soft goods robe and then give him a job like being the harbinger of death, I'm gonna be interested. Uh, what really sold me here though were his accessories. He comes with a little Game Boy handheld and this retro Windows 95 style pixelated hourglass. So this guy's been a fine addition to my desk this month leading up to Halloween, and I'd like to make some pixel art of him. And I'm thinking I'm gonna do something in the style of the Neo Geo Pocket color sprites, which is now, I guess, in a way, slowly becoming sort of a tradition for my Halloween videos, it seems, uh, with one dating back three years, and the most recent one being the shadow box design from last year. I found the best thing to do for making these pocket style sprites is to use really simple shapes as a way to build up the character. So to get started here, I've dropped in a 15 pixel circle to use for the head, and I'll copy that and offset it a little bit for the body. It's not that I expect this to be the actual shape of the body, but more like an indicator for the relative position and the volume just to design the robe around. And for the hands, I've kind of identified, I guess, like two key shapes that I like to use for the fingers. The first is a simple circular outline that has an overall dimension of four by four, uh, with the inner part being two by two. And this works well for fingers that are pointed toward the camera. So it kind of just represents like the tip of the finger. And the second unit is this sort of peanut shaped arrangement, I guess, uh, where it's basically like two of those original circles kind of overlapped with each other. And this works well as a sort of chunky finger. And just by placing a few of these units together, you can kind of get some basic hand structure started. In terms of the overall size, uh, these sprites tend to be around 40 pixels tall, give or take, depending on the exact character. So I've measured that out and placed a few blocks for the feet just to finish off the basic template. Next, I'm gonna figure out the line work of the design itself. Uh, and for this character, given that he's a robot uh, and a villain, I'm gonna make the silhouette very rigid and angular rather than being super flowy. So what this means for the line work is that I'm sticking to a lot of set angles, whether that be repeated one pixel, two pixel segments, that sort of thing. And my design mentality here was that when it meets a corner, it just changes into a new angle abruptly rather than uh, kind of rounding that corner gently, if that makes sense. The other thing to consider is that these sprites only use a max of three colors. And that's honestly one of my favorite things about this aesthetic. Uh, it's a really bold, contrasting look. And if you're already using uh, black and white as the first two colors, that actually only leaves one actual pop of color to really define the entire character around. My first thought for this was to use red just because of his eyes, uh, which is you know one of those iconic things to pull from the character design. And it is a pretty cool look, uh, though I feel like it becomes a bit strong when trying to repurpose that red to use for like shading and highlights elsewhere. So eventually I tone this back a bit more uh, into kind of this desaturated purple, which I would thought of as being almost a compromise between the red and the idea of a bluey sort of metallic look. If you're curious, here's one that has that exact sort of extra color into it, which looks neat, but this would be over the color limit. This is four colors. So I'm gonna move forward with just the purpley one. What I'd like to do here is to create an intro or idling kind of animation that incorporates that pixelated hourglass. Uh, kind of like he's gonna show up to the fight and you know it's the sign that he's about to take care of business. So I'm getting started here by drawing in that hourglass design uh, straight from the reference of the little toy accessory itself. Uh, although I'm actually guessing this is probably faithful to the original Windows design as well. Uh, and I feel like he should be sort of presenting this thing a bit, like he's uh, kind of holding it up. So I'm gonna rework the pose a little bit so it looks uh, more presentational like that. I'm bumping up the overall height by a couple pixels and then bringing the feet closer together. So it's kind of like he's standing uh, you know, straighter up and reaching up a bit. And then just to smooth the animation a bit, I'll create a third pose uh, that will actually be used to kind of glue these two together. But rather than making a posture that's exactly halfway between those original poses, I'm actually gonna make one where he's uh, kind of crouched down a little bit, maybe just one or two pixels again. So when we put these frames together, we can see him kind of bounce down and then reach up and then bounce down and go back to the neutral stance. So it's got just a bit of fun elasticity to it in a sense. Of course, from here, we actually need to see that uh, iconic hourglass spinning animation. 
So this is gonna require four different positions. Uh, there's gonna be the vertical and horizontal orientations, which is just the same artwork rotated. Um, but then we'll do a couple set at the diagonals. And Photoshop does this weird thing with 45 degree rotations where when you try to do this with pixel art, the preview doesn't look too bad. Uh, see, that's looking all right if I just pause it here. But once you click OK to accept this new position, then it just kind of actually settles into this weird artifacty mess that it didn't show in the preview. Um, I think, actually, I know Aceprite is way better for handling this kind of thing. Uh, but either way, I'm just doing a bit of cleaning up to obviously tidy those artifacts. And then after duplicating and flipping that to the other side, we've now got our four basic positions. And we can put those together to see kind of this initial spin animation. Uh, already bringing back lots of memories of the old family computer here. To finish this off, we'll add in the sand, of course. And I'm sure I could have looked up, you know, perhaps the original animation itself, but I just sort of improvised this one to uh, proceed in a way where the little dithered grouping of sand drops down by one pixel per frame, while also losing one or two pixels uh, at the same time, sort of from the sides. Honestly, it's a bit hard to describe the logic or flow of this, but I think you get the idea. And I'll put the frames on screen for you to see exactly how it worked out in mine. I think it came out to 10 unique frames in total, uh, including that spin to recycle it. And overall, this is actually kind of a fun sort of nostalgic surprise to get to explore for this artwork. Okay, not to get too embellishy or indulgent with the animation here, but I just had one last idea. And it's that I thought it'd be cool if he were to actually materialize on screen by rising out of the ground from this like block of data, uh, like a bunch of ones and zeros that then kind of grow and reveal the character. I think once we pair that with the hourglass idle animation, it should do a pretty good job at conveying those sorts of qualities about the character, uh, you know, being unique that it's a robot and not just a regular <laughs> run of the mill reaper, you know, uh, kind of having these references to retro tech and things like that. So just as a proof of concept, I've created this initial block of ones and zeros, and those are going to rise up with each frame and eventually get to a point where the character silhouette appears and flashes in purple and white and then leaves the actual sprite on screen after that. So this is sort of an early test, but I think it's got some potential. The only thing I wanna do before finalizing is to sort out the binary stuff. Uh, the initial block was actually just a bunch of random ones and zeros, but I'm redoing this after actually looking up proper formatting for binary. Uh, I use this online translator, so if it's correct, I should now be spelling out the word delete in binary which I think is just a fun little Easter egg for this part of the animation. All right, with that coming together, let's go ahead and take a look at the final animation for Robot Reaper. Here we go. All right, so one of the last things I did here was, uh, as you can see, kind of changed all that text color of the ones and zeros into this green, uh, which I thought looked good for just sort of like the matrix, like computer sort of aspect of it. But it was actually also necessary just to establish the contrast against the backdrop. The purple wasn't really cutting it there. Uh, all right, so thanks for joining me for this one. We'll close out with some CRT time where I've pitted him in this scene against Paizu. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square and happy Halloween, even if it's not October for you when you're watching this.